Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So glad you're here today. Good morning, Facebook, Internet, YouTube, whatever. Got a hot message this morning. Fasten your seatbelt. I don't like to pick on people too much, but sometimes there's some real famous people that do a lot of damage. And I'm going to tell you about a couple of them today. It's not my specialty. To, I'm just going to tell you the truth. But there's some real liars. I'm going to read you about them first. I'll flip my pages over here. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, Satan's, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, I'm going to tell you about some that say they're Christians and they're not. Some of them look very good. And I don't usually name a whole bunch of names, but I think his name needs to be mentioned. His name is John MacArthur. John MacArthur uh, is a Calvinist. And uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Pharisee. And this is his statement. Listen to this statement. It's ridiculous. He says it, and a lot of other these Calvinists say it. If God is not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Did you know what that statement means? There ain't nobody in the world saved. Because I'm going to tell you something. The only one ever walked the face of this earth that God was the Lord of all was the Lord Jesus Christ. Period. Ain't nothing else here but a bunch of sinners saved by grace. Like I said the other day, and I, they get mad at me for these Pharisees, these hypocrites, these peoples that are, uh, they got their people ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. They teach them all about the Bible, but they never win a soul in their life. And the preachers don't either. All they do is teach the Bible. But don't get me wrong. You know, anybody been around me, I ain't nothing but a Bible man. I read the Bible for hours and hours every day. When I say the Bible, I say the King James Bible. There's only one Bible, King James Bible. It had forever been settled in heaven. Did you know... Some of you might not even believe this. I believe the Bible always has been. I don't believe the Bible was ever written. I don't believe God ever wrote the Bible. I, I believe... Uh, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. It's kind of a tricky question, so watch before you holler out. Uh, the Bible is as old as God. Tell me how old God is. Anybody know how old God is? Forever. He has no beginning. No beginning, no end. Now, you and I as his creation, we're created in the image of God. And once we're created, we're created. He wasn't. But once we're created, we have no end. It's either going to be in heaven or hell. Now, one of these false teachers I'm going to tell you about, there's a doctor in this city. My wife said, don't tell his name. I won't tell his name. But but he's a, he's a nice guy. He's a very good doctor. I'm not going to tell you his name. I'm not going to tell you what field he's in or anything. But in his, in his office, he plays gospel music. I mean gospel hymns about salvation. He sings the songs. I thought, I can't wait to meet this guy. Talk to him. I talk to him. He ain't sure of his salvation. He don't know he's saved. I said, where are you going to church now? Seventh-day Adventist church. Anybody know of anything about the Seventh-day Adventist church? No. It's big. Uh, you know how many Seventh-day Adventists there are? 120 million. That's a bunch of folks. 
120 Seventh-day Adventists. You know, they own a whole bunch of hospitals. You know, over here, uh, Adventist Hospital, that's all seven. You know, on every screen, on every screen in their hospital, they got pictures of Jesus and they got Bible verses. It ain't the right Bible. They don't have King James Bible, but they claim to be Christians. There, it's 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 a cult like Jehovah Witness. You say, why do you say that? I told that doctor. I says, you go, you're going to a cult. I knocked him back a couple steps. Uh did you know the Seventh Day Adventist Church is a legalistic system? Did you know the Seventh Day Adventist Church started in 1830? Did you know who started the Seventh Day Adventist Church? A woman. I ain't got nothing against women unless if they're in their place. Huh? Don't, don't get mad, girls. I'm just trying to get you, get you the Bible to you. Yeah. All the guys like this. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Don't forget, it's God, man, woman. Don't forget that. God always works through authority. He works through chain of command. You're the boss in your house, Joe. I'm the boss in my house. Any man lets his wife lead, he's a fool, and he's not following the Bible. His, his wife is frustrated, so is he. <laughs> a woman was made to be in submission. I know some of you rebels here that, uh, you know how, you know, my friend has a big Baptist church at used to he died now in North Carolina. He says, I can always tell a charismatic couple when they come in my church. I said, how can you tell that? He says, a woman's always walking in front and doing all the talking. <laughs> you ain't charismatic, are you? <laughs> I'm going to pick on you, Reese. You know that. <laughs> anyway this woman she had a vision and then she had some rules and she decided that there's going to be a second part second part of salvation <laughs> there ain't no second part of salvation buddy Christ died according to scriptures he shed his blood he was buried and he rose again the third day Plus, nothing. Nothing. No baptism, no good works, no Baptist title, nothing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And if you add anything to that, you're a heretic and you're a liar. Don't get me wrong. When I got saved, I got it, man. I ain't had a bottle of beer since. I ain't had a cigarette. You smoke three and a half packs of Pall Mall every day. No, 50 years ago, I ain't had one. You know why? I, you know why I smoke Paul Mall instead of Lucky Strike? They're longer. <laughs> Get more drags off it. Back in the old days, a real man never smoked a filter cigarette. You either smoke. I mean, if you was a real man, you smoked Camel, but they're too short for me. I had to have a longer cigarette, Paul Mall. <laughs> if, if I tell. <laughs> Tell the truth, Joe. Yeah, tell the truth. <laughs> but the Seventh Day Adventist, let's just park there a minute. And now get this Seventh Day Adventist, they teach soul sleep. They say when you die, you go to sleep. I'll tell you one thing the Bible says if you die, you either go to heaven or hell, you don't go to sleep. They teach you to go to sleep. Now, I guess they had to say that because they also don't believe in hell. Seventh-day Adventists, they don't believe in hell. But nobody studies anything. They have a guy. I never liked a guy. I don't like apologists. You know, they, they talk about Christian apologists. I don't have to apologize for Christianity. I'm just going to preach the Bible. They say, well, they ain't apologizing. What, they, what these apologists do is they debate with worldly people about the Bible. I don't debate the Bible. I just preach it. I don't, have to, I don't have to debate the Bible. I don't want to convince some unsaved person. 
unsaved person, you ain't going to convince them. They got to get saved. You know, uh, you ain't going to understand nothing about the Bible till you get saved. You're in darkness. You got to believe on Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. What do you know about it? I got it. That's how I know about it. I don't know if anybody in this room is saved but me. My wife gets mad at me. She says, don't you know I'm saved, honey? I says, I think you're saved. I don't know. She gets mad at me. I don't know if anybody be saved. Because my, the Bible says angel, Satan himself come as angel of light. How much more? I don't know. I remember a guy, a great preacher. And preacher priest, and his wife got saved. She'd been saved for years, raised her kids, her kids were saved. She wasn't saved. She got saved. I don't know when someone gets saved. I had someone text me in the middle of the night last night that I led to Christ, 10 years old, in the ghetto, Hillside Project. Texted me. He says, Pastor, I woke up in the middle of the night. And he says, I dreamed that the, that the pillars crumbled. I'm not saved. He said, this last night, I was up all night. I wasn't up all night, really. I went to bed at 8 o'clock, got up at 1 o'clock, stayed up the rest of the night and studied. I have kind of a funny schedule. I'll do that. I do it that way sometime. This morning, he calls me dad. He didn't, have, he didn't know who his dad was. He's born in a project, Hillside Project. His aunt, he lived with his aunt. She was a drunk. His sister was a whore, worked out of the project. Now, I, to be honest with you, I don't know if he is saved or not, but evidently he's not right with God. Now, don't get me wrong, I ain't a Pharisee, but I've always stayed close enough to God where I've never doubted my salvation. Have you ever doubted your salvation, Joe, since you've been saved? No, I haven't either. I think if you really get it, how are you going to doubt it? Because you didn't do nothing for it. How are you going to doubt it? <laughs> I mean, I screwed up a time or two. God help me. But he's my Savior. Amen. Well, glory. He's <laughs> my Savior. <laughs> Will it text me last night? Pastor, I reaffirm my commitment to Christ. Maybe you need it today. I don't know. Maybe you're saved and just backslidden. I don't know. I've never got that. And I'm not trying to make myself out to be anybody, but I've never doubted one second in my life that I wasn't saved. But I'm going to tell you something. I didn't do nothing to get saved. And I got a free gift. And I screw up once in a while. Preachers ain't supposed Yeah, everybody screws up. Everybody, everybody sins. Just read seventh chapter of Romans. Paul was a pretty good Christian. Remember what he said? Yeah. He said, I know what I should do, but I do what I shouldn't do. <laughs> you know what the Calvinists say? He's fatalist. They say, oh, Paul wasn't saying he was a sinner. He was talking about a lost person. No, he was talking about Paul, the apostle Paul. Just like you and I. Sometimes we know what we should do, but we, did you ever do that, Billy Joe, do what you should do? I have. How many of you have done that? You know what you should do, and you do what you should do? Come on. You're just good old-fashioned Christian. Now, I'm giving nobody an excuse for sin, because 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, it says, there is no temptation taking you. What, the light went on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You still got to change it after a while, Patrick. God just brought it on for, for a little while. I guess I tell something that was right. <laughs> it comes on. I bought you 15 balls, man. Let's get him in. This one's all over here, too. Okay. <laughs> God bless you. I love Patrick. He's a good man. Praise God. He's doing good. He's doing good. He's doing good. God didn't give you the victory, hadn't he? Isn't that good, Patrick? Yeah. Well, glory. Yeah.
What? Talk louder. I got hard here. Who's going to be okay? Test what? The, the boy that texted you last night. Yeah. I, I, well, I'll just tell you what he texted me. He told me he prayed the pillars crumbled down. He wasn't saved, and he asked the Lord to assure him of his salvation. That's all I know. Ten years old. He got saved when he was ten. He's fifty. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he got saved forty years ago. Oh. I've, I've been I've been in this business a long time. I was thinking of a ten-year-old kid. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of shotgun shooting right now, but there's a guy. He's for local from here. He preached in the church. I'll watch it because, anyway, I ain't going to tell you about what. I ain't going to tell you his name. But I want to check him out a little bit. And he was on there. It was a sermon that he preached at another church. It was a big church he preached at because you can tell. It had a big choir loft, big pulpit, nice place. And, and the pastor introduced him very gracious and kind he was preaching at a revival conference and uh the guy got up there he's a local guy i ain't gonna tell you his name you might figure out who he is i don't know i'll get you i'll get you trying to figure it out anyway <laughs> but he he said oh yeah this is a great church and he says you get he says uh uh you're getting all these people saved he says, this, he's preaching in the guy's church on a Monday night at a revival meeting. And he says, you're getting all these people saved. He says, where are they? He had a, the guts and the gall to insult that pastor of that local church that was a soul-winning church and question him on where his converts are. I don't know where my converts are, if I have any, but they're God's converts. All I do is tell the story, Amen. That's all we're supposed to do is tell the story. That's right. You see, these, these guys are lordship salvationists. Doesn't this sound good? If God, they, they don't say God, they say God. They talk like that. Holy. <laughs> if God isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Oh, shut up. You make me throw up. You know what they do? They look down at you like you're something. He even made mention. No, the sermon is. I listened to this guy a couple times. I figured out who he was before I ever looked him up. Anyway, <laughs> he's talking about poor people and homeless. He mentioned and talked about them like bums and useless people. That's a Pharisee. Anybody looks down on anybody on the face of this earth and calls them no good or worthless. They ain't about God. God come for the poor folks and, and the homeless and the, the needy. Sinners like you and I, amen? amen. Come on. That's he looked right. down on them. That's right. Then he... He attacked this pastor from his from the pastor's pulpit on a Monday night. And he preached on the rapture. Find these local guys here to preach out. Check it out. You'll find his servant. I will tell you his name. You'll have to look for it. Oh, no. <laughs> he's, a, he's a Baptist. He's a King James Bible. So you don't have to look through the bunch of them. He's a Baptist. Claims to be independent Baptist. King James Bible. <laughs> Claiming this, where are you cutting? That's what he talks. He even had another sermon I seen in his Galatians chapter one. I'm real familiar. You know how I got so familiar with the Bible? I just read it and read it and read it and read it. Well, see, well, where'd you go to school? Knoxville, his hometown. You know where I went to school in Knoxville? School of Hard Knocks. I'm still in school. Huh? Well, you don't have a degree? I don't have no degree. Uh, you know who gives out degrees? Uh, they're professors that never want a soul in their life. Huh? 
temperature gives it up. Huh? The temperature. I can't talk up. I'm broke. The temperature. Huh? I'm sorry. Tell me what he said, Joe. He said the temperature gives out the degrees. Temperature? Yeah. Oh, the degrees, yeah. Yeah, mine's 92.3. Temperature, yeah, I got you. I'm sorry. I can't hear well. <laughs> I get sick of these guys. He says Galatians 1. Two times in Galatians 1, the Bible says, if anyone preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. Then he says, and again, I say unto you, if anybody preaches any other gospel than this, let him be accursed. He says, that don't mean a different gospel. That saved people that aren't taught right. Now, he's full of, he's full of scrambled eggs or something. Let's <laughs> talk about different gospel. It's talking about, it's talking about the, uh, What's his name? Um, Seventh-day Adventist. See, they got the wrong gospel. He's talking about Jehovah Witnesses. He's, he's talking about Mormons. What, what, what's so important you girls got to talk about now? Can't you listen now? I just Well, you're not. You're talking. Let's listen, huh? All right. You got something to talk about? Write it down. Talk to her later. You got to listen now. This time to listen. Well, yeah, he preached that. You just, just get, I'll tell you another thing he said. You check it up too. Check out, you find out who he is. Find his name. <laughs> he said, Paul never won a soul for three years. Now you might have learned that. Some Baptist preacher might have taught you that. He's a liar. You just read, read Acts chapter 9. Paul got people saved immediately in Damascus and he went to Jerusalem and got people saved. I sent him a text from, from nine, I, I sent to his church a question. You know what? I sent it to him like four days ago. You know what? He never gave me an answer. I'll never communicate with the man or not. Someone told me three years ago the guy didn't like me. I can see why he doesn't like me. <laughs> we preach a different gospel. Yeah. Uh, he, he, yeah. Someone, to, I don't know why he. I don't know why he, you know who told me he didn't like me? Tommy Towner. Tommy Towner went to his church. He says that man don't like you, Pastor. I said, well, I don't know why. I don't even know him. I don't know nothing about him. He must listen to my sermon. I, I don't know what. But Tommy Towner told me that he'd been dead fifteen years, hadn't he? Oh yeah, at least. Uh, he told me twenty years ago or so the guy didn't like me. He'd been here. He's got following stuff. But he said. If Paul, if Paul couldn't preach for three years, why do you think you can go out there and witness? Oh, shut up. What did I teach on Sunday night? The woman at the well. How long did it take her to win souls? A couple minutes. She got saved, and she went into town. And back in those days, women didn't talk much to men. They, pardon me saying this, girls, but women knew their place. <laughs> I like to get these, especially these girls in here get mad. Some of them, that's why I pull their chain, trying to get their attention. Because <laughs> you've been lied to so much. You're frustrated. <laughs> yeah, he, he said he didn't want a soul for three years. And the woman at the well, she got saved. And it said she went and talked to who? Read it, at John 4, the men. And she said, many believe because of her testimony. How long did it take her? Like 10 minutes and she was a soul winner. You better get winning souls. Don't listen to these false preachers like this guy. Telling you it took Paul three years to learn how to win souls. Why he got saved and, and why do you think they're going to kill him in Damascus? Because he's willing souls. They'd let him out of the they let him out of Damascus over the wall on a basket. You know that? Did you read that? Acts chapter 9, you can read that. They wanted to kill him. Then he went back to Jerusalem. It wasn't three years later, because three years later they'd have known he was saved. 
It said they were afraid to talk to him because he just went to Damascus to kill Christians. Now I think it was Barnabas that told him, don't worry about it. He, he got saved. Then he preached in Jerusalem. Get to preaching. Get to preaching. Are you saved? I didn't say you're going to pastor a church. That's a different calling. Every Christian's a preacher. I'm talking to you women too. Do you believe in women preachers? I believe in women soul winners. I don't believe in women pastors. I believe a pastor of a church needs to be a man because the Bible says so. You know what it says? A pastor, an elder, an overseer, needs to be the husband of one wife. Now, the only way you can be a husband of one wife, that's to be a man. Amen? Amen. Ain't no woman preachers. Got all these crazy talking in tongues Pentecostal churches <laughs> with the co-pastors. Woman's up there in front talking more than a man. You know what I'm talking about. You go to them kind of churches sometimes. You know what brother in law is a Pentecostal preacher? I don't go to his church, but I watch them. Well, you used I to go. They got them here in town. Rock and roll churches. Yeah. Well, let me get off. Uh, let me get off this guy. Got enough time on him. He's a false teacher. He don't believe in soul winning. Preach the whole sermon. Never mentions getting saved. Ask you to get saved. You know why he's a Calvinist. He don't say he's a Calvinist, but he believes there's only certain people are going to get saved. And you can't do nothing about it. You're going to get saved. You can't. No, no. Why on earth do you think God gave the Great Commission? Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's to every one of us. Amen. Wake up, Billy Joe. <laughs> Billy Joe didn't feel too good. That played some music for him. It woke him up a little bit. but <laughs> I still don't, feel good don't you? You'll be all right. I'll try to make it through the day. You might not. Well, if you don't, you go to heaven. I'd be glad you're going to heaven. But I, I don't want you to go to heaven today, but you might. Maybe Jesus come back. That'd be better yet, wouldn't it? <laughs> so this guy preached on the rapture. Now, if he'd have preached on the rapture, I believe Jesus could come in. He was, he was doing pretty good on the rapture. What are some guys on here? Oh, I don't even know these guys. That guy's a big name guy. Watching. Hi. i never seen you on there before. <laughs> This other guy wants to come on live. I ain't bringing you on live, no. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to another subject. I'm going to get off this guy that um, doesn't believe in soul winning, doesn't give an invitation, didn't ask you if you're saved because he thinks everybody, he thinks only a few are going to heaven and most people are going to hell. That's the stupidest thing. It's, it's her, it's, he's a heretic. You see, Calvinists are saved. I don't know if they're saved or not. I, I, know the, I, I know that John Calvin was a heretic. You say, how dare you say that about John Calvin? Because you know what John Calvin did with people like me, my forefathers in the faith? You know what he do with us? Because he didn't believe in immersion baptism, he drowned them. John Calvin drowned Christians like me back in the Reformation. Yeah, check it up. See, nobody ever checks on nothing. They say, well, Calvin was okay. His five-point tulip and all this, oh, it's a bunch of baloney. No. Irresistible grace. You can't do nothing. You're just going to get saved and you ain't got nothing to do with it. That's stupid. Everybody in the world has a chance to be saved. And everybody, they're going to go to hell because they reject Christ. And you have a choice. Everybody in here has a choice to choose Christ. Or go to hell for your sins because you won't get right with God. I hate to use the word. I like the word repentance, but some people misuse the word repentance. Repentance, what it means is you change your mind about your sin. That's what it means. It don't mean you remember all your sins. No. Lord knows, I can't remember all mine. It's hard remembering back a week or two, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. Huh? These Pharisees, oh yeah. If God is not Lord of all, 
He is not Lord at all. That's baloney. That's Calvinistic. That's fatalistic. That's a lie. Come out of hell. I love Jesus and he saved me. Amen. I'm a preacher that loves Jesus. I'm just going to lift him up. Amen. I ain't putting on no airs of being nobody but a sinner saved by grace. And I'll do everything I can to get people saved and get you to get people saved. And let's get at it. Got very few soul winning churches in this city. I say that. The largest church in every state in the United States of America had thousands of people. It was independent, fundamental, King James, Bible believing church that was a soul winning church. Not anymore. Not anymore. You don't have one, you don't have, don't have one state in America where the largest church is independent Baptist church. And there was a time in the 1980s that every church in America that was winning souls. The largest church in every state, there. you check it out, was an independent, fundamental, bible believing like your church. What was the name of your church? Who was your pastor? Uh, I'll be in Knoxville, Brother Bob Bevington. He had a big church, thousands of people, right? Yeah. He used to run buses, get people saved, didn't he? Yeah. He's a soul winner, wasn't he? He was a soul winner. Yeah. Yeah. He was. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> and in his last sermon, what did he say? They just don't get it, Billy Joe. <laughs> That's what he said, didn't he? He's a great preacher. You, you're, you're lucky to be under a great preacher. Great preacher. He was a good man. I know he was. He preached God's word, and he didn't apologize. He didn't apologize, no. Preach God's word, you don't have to apologize. Well, let's get to another. Let's get off of these Calvinists. Let's get off of this guy from town. Let's get on to Church of Christ. They got a rock and roll church over here on Hand Avenue. What's the name of it? Tomoka Christian Church. <laughs> They're false teachers taking people to hell. They got a rock and roll band. How, how many of you go over there sometimes? You've been over to Tomoka Church, the rock and roll. Did you, you ever been over there? Once. Once. Ago. Well, you're smart enough not to go back. But they got Bible studies all over. Now listen, I know people, friends of mine, that I believe are saved, they go to Bible studies in a house at Tomoka Christian Church. Well, they're fools. They're idiots. The only reason Tomoka Christian Church has individual home Bible studies is to make a, a, a Church of Christ person out of you. You know when the Church of Christ, uh, let me think, when they, oh, they start way back. Church of Christ They've always been water salvationists. Now, one of their, their most famous person in America is a book writer named Max Lucado. Has anyone ever heard of Max Lucado? Yeah, he's a, he, he writes books. He's a false prophet. He's Church of Christ. His church is in Texas. I forget what city in Texas. But he's a, he's, he's a, he's a false teacher, and he teaches water salvation. But he lies about it. Just recently now, he took the name Church of Christ off. He just has a name on it. He doesn't have Church of Christ. But still in his teaching, he shows that you have to be, and I could read you. No, I ain't going to read it to you. But there was a guy that interviewed him and his lead man, his first guy. He got about five, 6,000 in his church. But, the, but his big call is his book writing. You've heard of his books. I even know preachers. I know some stupid preachers. I said stupid preachers that believe a lie that read his books and teach his stuff. Now, you know what kind of uh, a Bible teacher he is? He's one of these feel-good preachers. Makes you feel good. Yeah, that's what he is, Max Lucado. I, I give his name because he's a big problem. And these Church of Christ around here, the one down the street, it's false teaching church. It says on, the, on their sign for years now, it said, God is good. Yeah, he is good. They're false teachers down here. Church of Christ is false teachers over there. Tomoka Christian. Well, they're, they're big time water salvationists. You can't get saved by no water. Now, there's Baptists that teach you to get saved by water, too. They ain't right either. I don't care what you call them. You can call them Jesus only people, United Pentecostal. They're liars. They say you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Anybody says you have to do anything but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is a false teacher. Max Lucado, his church, the whole movement.
Well, I, I, I know good Christians. I think they're good I really do. They go to Bible studies at Church of Christ. From Tomoka Church or from this church up the street here or, or big time Max Licato's church in Texas here. I forget what city it's in, but it's in one of them cities in Texas. Big church. You got to watch out. You got to watch out. Get here to my page again. I've flipped over a bunch of pages. 2 Corinthians 11. I'm just telling you, you better get the truth. For such are false apostles, 11, 13, 2 Corinthians, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself shall be transformed in an angel of light. Therefore is it no great thing if he ministers unto his ministers, the devil's ministers, also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now their works are, they're telling you, work salvation. You've got to be baptized. You've got to follow the law. These churches are legalistic. They say you got to do this, that, or the other thing. They said if you don't live a good life, you're not saved. You know, I'm going to tell you something. Now, this is going to knock the socks off you. And some of you have been taught wrong. And you think if you don't live right, you're not a Christian. That's not true at all. I just listened to a thing by John MacArthur yesterday. And he says it's false teaching if you say all that you have to do is believe to be saved. Not, no, he's a false teacher. All you have to do is believe to be saved. If you believe, if you, if you believe with your heart, the heart unto salvation, and confess with your mouth, you're saved. And what you do with your life as far as reading the Bible and studying and following on and going along in the grace of God and becoming a bigger Christian, that, that's up to you. You have a choice. The trouble with most Christians, I believe that they're really saved, and I say this carefully, but many of them, they never amount to anything because they never study the Bible. They get saved, and they're saved as by fire. The Bible talks about being saved as by fire, and everything you do since you be saved is going to be tested by fire. It's called the Bema Seat of Christ. There's two judgments. There's a judgment for believers and a judgment for unbelievers. The unbelievers is the great white throne judgment. There's no general judgment. There's a, there's a judgment for believers on your, on your works are, what your rewards will be in heaven. And then the great white throne judgment is a judgment to see how bad you're going to be punished in hell because you're lost. And I believe that you and I will be at the white throne observing. We're not going to be there to be judged. <laughs> gone, 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 gone Yes, my sins are gone Buried in the deepest sea <laughs> oh, Glory Buried in the deepest sea Yes, that's good enough for me <laughs> My sins are gone God don't remember none of my past sins Amen God don't forget, don't remember my sins from today. He's already forgot my sins for tomorrow. Which, well, that ain't right. No, it's called being a child of God, being under the blood. Amen. Amen. Well, glory. I'm just going. And you know what's going to be? You know, once you become a soul winner, you know what you're going to be? You're going to be a better Christian. You're going to quit your smoking. Going to quit your lying. You're going to have a hard time shacking up to your neighbor in the motel if you're shacking up. You think you're going to be telling about Jesus? I don't think it's going to work too good, is it? Because they're going to call you what? You might even be saved, but you're a hypocrite. Hey, man? So being a witness, it makes you clean your life up. Whenever I go anyplace, and I say this, this little personal thing I do, I make it known immediately that I'm a Christian and I witness. You know why? Because I want to be a better person when I'm around them. Because, because once you... Once you identify yourself and bring yourself out, you got to watch your P's and Q's, don't you, huh? Right. <laughs> I can't get mad at them the next minute, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I've told them, and I want to get mad and holler, and I say, oh, i got to keep my mouth shut. I already told them I was a Christian. 
<laughs> Do you ever, as a Christian, feel like cussing somebody out? <laughs> Billy Joe's cussed me out three or four times, maybe ten times. No, not really. I'm not cussed you out one time today. <laughs> today. <laughs> and he's mean today, too. Oh, let's let's get back to the old time. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Come on. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for our fathers. It was good for our mothers. It was good for our fathers. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough. When are you going to get back to it? Do you remember the day you got saved? I remember my day. Who, me? 69. Yeah. April 4th, 1969. Yeah, I tell it all, all the time. I said 69. Someone told me 64. What's your date? What's your date, Angie? You got a date? The day you put the oil on my head. No, no, oil ain't saving you. Oil ain't saving you. See, when anybody mentions anything, the day I baptize you, the day I put, no, oil ain't going to save you, neither, neither is going to be the water. You're going to have to. You're going to have to believe. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, man and woman. you got to believe. Amen. Once you get that settled in your heart, you get saved the Bible way. Huh? And then you know what? The more you love Jesus, the better person you'll be. Amen. How are you going to smoke cigarettes if you really love Jesus? How are you going to watch pornography if you really love Jesus? Huh? How, how are you going to do that? I thought that was just for men. But I heard a preacher preach a sermon on that a while back here. And he said, now this was worldly statistics about the internet. It wasn't even one from a, church, from a preacher. But he says a third of the people that watch pornography on the internet are women. A third of the people that watch pornography are women. That knocked the socks off me. I thought it's just men that were sex perverts like that, but a third of them are women. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Pornography is a big problem. All you got to do, take your phone, you're on. You get anything you want free. The devil. See how the devil is? He don't make it hard for you, does he? No? No? Talked to him the other day. He's right with God. I don't know if he's saved or not. I don't know if anybody's saved with me. He done good for a little while. Coming here the other day on meth. Oh my God. High as a kite. Blabbering, talking stupid. Any of you here when he was here? He's blabbering, talking stupid, you know. I said, man, you need to go sober up, come back tomorrow morning, sleep it off. You know what? Didn't come back. Yeah. What's, what's your deal? Marijuana, alcohol, meth, cocaine? I got, all, I got all that stuff in here. Every day I got someone in here with that. What's your deal? I know you screwed up for some reason. I told someone today, I says, you're messed up. If I know someone's flopping around out there in the street and ain't got no place to stay, their life's all messed up and they seem to be able to walk, talk, and take nourishment and work if they wanted to. They got some kind of dope problem. I guarantee you. You know it. Yeah. Better get right with God. Get saved. Or if you're backslidden, get right with God. There ain't no temptation taking you, but it's common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able, but will temptation make a way of escape. You've got you and I have no business for any sin if you're a true child of God. Amen. How do I know that? Only you know it. I don't. 
only know what I see. Sometimes I might see you and don't think you're saved, and you might be saved. You're just backslidden. I don't know. I can't make them kind of judgments. No. I can't make them kind of judgments. I got to worry about myself. Preach the truth. Got to fall in love with Jesus. I'm going to preach Jesus, him crucified and rose again. Is Jesus real to you? Like the man, does he, do, you, do you think about him? Does he consume you? You know, I've been in this rescue mission business 50 years. Sometimes, I won't get me wrong, especially back in Milwaukee where we had a bunch of people coming, had men's meeting at night. Before he went to bed at night, He's hundreds of people there. The old boy come forward, drunk as a skunk, drunk as a skunk, come to the altar. I'll go down by him. <laughs> He'd be crying and weeping, and wailing. Oh, Pastor. He said, Pastor, I've done wrong for my Savior. I got drunk. I love Jesus. I didn't do right. He bawled like a baby. I don't care what you say. I think that old drunk's probably saved. Just ain't right with God. Because he had a love. He had a heart for God and Jesus Christ. You can't talk about Jesus lightly. Or not with love and compassion unless you're saved. And if you are saved, you'll love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. He first loved me because he died and shed his blood on Calvary's cross. And he was buried. And he rose again from the grave the third day. And I got washed in the blood of the Lamb. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing flow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, my Lord. Don't be telling me about how good you are and how you don't sin. <laughs> you sin. We don't go to heaven because we don't sin. We don't sin because we're going to heaven and we're saved. But we can sin. And we do sin. God help us. There's some of you sitting right here in this auditorium right now and some of you out there on the internet. You're a miserable person because you're a backslidden Christian. I don't know you sin, but you know it. God knows it. Don't forget all, all your dealings. They're not with the preacher. They're not with your husband or wife. They're with God. Don't forget that. We're dealing with God. You think you're going to pull over something on God? No. All we can do is bow our head in shame and trust and thank for forgiveness, amen. Have you got the forgiveness? Have you applied the blood? Do you love him? Are you like that old drunk? Come forward, he's drunk, but he's so sorry and he's so ashamed because he turned his back on his Savior. Now, you might say, I'm sorry I got drunk. I didn't do very well. I failed. No, that ain't nothing to do with it. If you're saved, you're saved. You failed. Don't get me wrong. I ain't been drunk over 50 years. I ain't smoked a cigarette over 50 years. Only woman I slept with is my wife, 62 years. And I ain't perfect. But if that was the things that got me to heaven, it can't get you to heaven. Nothing can. 
What's the only sin take you to hell? Not believing in Jesus. That's all. Remember, salvation is faith in the blood of Christ and the power of the resurrection plus nothing. That's Bible. You had church membership to it, you had baptism to it, you had good works to it, you had anything to it. That's your false gospel. Believe. And then come to an old-fashioned Bible-believing church. Use the King James Bible. Now I say this, and I hope I don't get no Baptist preachers mad at me. The church might not even be called Baptist. I had a mission in Milwaukee. It wasn't called a Baptist church. A lot of Baptist preachers were mad at me because I had a rescue mission that ran several thousand and I run it just like a Baptist church, and they were mad at me because they didn't have Baptists on the front of my church because I called it a rescue mission instead of a Baptist church. <laughs> I have nothing against it. I'm, this is a Baptist church. I, I, I'm not ashamed of being a Baptist. But uh, just call, you, call yourself a Baptist don't mean you, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of Calvinistic Baptists today, especially. And a lot of Baptists that believe that you got to be baptized to be saved. Those Baptist churches teach that. But this church don't. I believe every church is autonomous. It means we're on our own here. We call our own pastor. We don't have no headquarters anywhere. Nobody tells our church what to do. Baptist, Baptist. Baptistic church is a congregational church. It's ruled by the congregation. We vote in the pastor. I had a unanimous had a unanimous decision voted in this church. Only needed 50%. You can throw me out today if you want. Got to get three quarters of you. Three quarters you can throw me out today. You could vote and kick me the curb today. That's, that's, Baptist, that's our rules on our Baptist church. And nothing to do with nobody or not talking to other preachers or anything. Just our congregation. I had 100% vote to get in. And if you want to get me out, it's going to take three quarters. All I needed to get in was 51, 50 plus one. That's Baptist Church. It's called autonomous, independent. Wouldn't even have to be called Baptist. It's just before Baptist, it's called a congregational church, what it's called. It's congregational rule. But Jesus is. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. <laughs> My mother used to sing that to me. She's Pentecostal. And he's just the same as his lovely name. And that's the reason why I love him so. Because Jesus my old-fashioned Pentecostal mother sang to me. I'm, my grandma and grandpa on my dad's side, they were some of the dearest Christians and the finest Christians I ever knew in my life, and they were Pentecostal. You say, how dare you say that as a Baptist? Well, I'm just telling you that. Neither one of them could pray in English. They are Hungarian. But when they prayed for me, I cried. I couldn't understand them. But they're getting a hold of heaven. They prayed for me. They knew I was a preacher. Bless you, my grandma. Pray for me, grandma. She loved me and she loved Jesus. <laughs> it's all about the Savior. Don't you get hung up with no other stuff. You get to know him. Tell about them everywhere you go. Well, just out here. We're preaching out on the... I had the guy come over. We're witnessing. I didn't even realize he's a guy that runs a business next door. Got him saved on the driveway, Romans Road. Jake was there with me. He was there. Pat was there with me. I don't know. He got saved on the driveway. You can get him anywhere. In a restaurant, next door neighbor, on the job. 
Just take them down Old Romans Road. You got to tell them they're a sinner. You got to know that. If you're not lost, you can't get saved. Trust completely in Christ, not in the church, not in works. I'm glad I got it. Have you got it? How many of you got it? I got it. You got it? Well, glory. Amen. Let's tell it, amen. amen. Go tell it on the mountain. Tell it everywhere you go. It's so simple. In this world, I've tried most everything. I'm happy now to say I'd rather be a Christian in a good old-fashioned way. I'm walking down the grand old highway. I want the world to know I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know. Yeah. Now, all the world seems bright since I got right. And I sang and prayed and shout. My burdens have been lifted since Jesus brought me out. And I'll tell the world will far and near as I travel here below. I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know. Well, glory. Amen. Give us some, give us something else. Sing for us. <laughs> well, glory. Come on, sing for us, Billy Joe. Come on. At first I heard of a people who claim old-time religion was real. I said, I'll go down and take a look at that crowd. They're with just weak-minded, I feel. Huh. Something got a hold of me. Well, God. Something got a hold of me. Amen. I went there to fight. But oh my, that night, God certainly huh. got a hold of me. Yeah. Sure got a hold of me, amen. Did he get a hold of you? Did he get a hold of you? Amen. Watch you get it to somebody else. Amen. Watch you forget all these cults and false teachers and work salvationists and goody two shoes folks. Amen. This old time sinner like you and I that got our sins washed in the blood. Right. And now we can get it out. Yeah. We give them a great commission. Go to every creature, every person, tell them about Jesus. And get them saved. If they won't listen, go to the next one. If they won't listen, go to the next one. Amen? Amen. Well, glory. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you. Yes, Lord. I got on some of these people that are false teachers. And I don't care. We want the real deal. April 4th, 1969, I got washed in the blood. Something got a hold of me like it did Billy Joe. Others here. Excited about it. Let us be witnesses. If you're not saved, you know it. You might be here in the audience. God speaking to your heart. You know you're not saved. Why don't you pray to send his prayer with me? You're out there on YouTube, Facebook, whatever, on the internet. You need to get saved. Pray that send his prayer right now. This is a prayer. Pray it with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come through the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of His resurrection. I believe Jesus died for me. And he was buried and He rose the third day. Paid for my sins completely. Amen. I can't do anything to save myself but trust in You. I turn from my sins. I acknowledge my sins. And as Romans 10, 13 says, I call upon the name of the Lord. You said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm calling upon you right now to forgive me and cleanse me of my sins. Thank you for saving me right now. Amen. Amen. Amen.